Come on, give Jesus a bigger shout. A bigger shout. Come on, give Jesus a hug. Hey. You may have your seats. You may have your seats. Praise the Lord. Today is an anointing service. Praise God. Hallelujah. And every time we talk about the anointing, um, um, many of us think it's about the oil. Praise God. It has everything and nothing to do with the physical oil. The same way baptism, it has nothing to do with physical water. Praise God. These are symbols, symbols of baptism, of the anointing. Praise God. You can't pour out oil on a sinner and to expect them to manifest the anointing of God. Hallelujah. Because today I want us to understand something, that Jesus is the anointing. Jesus is the anointing. Praise God. And that is why we need to break out of a religious understanding of what the scriptures speak about. There are people, there are pastors, they people teach and preach the wrong thing. It has never been the oil. Some places they sell to you oil and you buy oil very expensive because this oil has been anointed by a certain pastor. I get what I'm saying. I'm saying Praise God. There's no harm in, in, in using an anointing oil. There's no harm using handkerchiefs to pray for people. The Bible says that you can pray actually and release it to somebody and they will be healed. Praise God. Anything can be used as a point of contact to allow God to do a work on this earth. Praise God. You could be told your sister or somebody, somebody is sick somewhere and you can't reach them. You can speak a word from where you are and where they are, they'll be healed. Jesus, it happened to the to the, to the, to, to, to the centurion. Praise God. Who say, speak a word where you are and I know my servant in the house, he'll be healed. Praise God. You can as well even take a cloth, a piece of cloth. You can't reach there. Pray for it, anoint it. And give it to somebody. Get a, go tell them, put it on your sick. And the sick will be healed. Praise God. Hallelujah. But it is not really the cloth. Praise God. Many of us, I, I tell you the truth, there are people who go to witches. How they can get things, you know, things that manifest what they call anointing in the, in the physical eye. When you touch people, they fall. Hallelujah. I believe in the anointing of God. I believe that it breaks every yoke. I believe that God can come down and none of us will be on our feet. We'll be down on our knees or down because you're slain under the power of God. But it is not the slaining. Praise God. Hallelujah. Because it has everything to do with Jesus. It has nothing to do with the physical appearance of things. It has everything to do with Jesus. He is the anointing of God. He is God by himself. Hallelujah. Listen to me. If you're so prayerful, you could reach levels that even when your siblings wear a jacket that was yours, they get healed or whatever disease they had. But it is not the courts. Are you getting this? Nobody said the apostles, they were walking on the street and their shadow, as they pass by, if the shadow goes above you like this, you get healed. Praise God. But it is not the shadow. It is Jesus. Hallelujah. So everything else can be used as a point of contact. To bring healing, to bring revival, or to cause a work of God. Praise God. Listen to me. If you're so prayerful, see the seat you're sitting on right now? You can pray on that seat. But when you wake up, the next person sitting on that seat, if they were sick of cancer, cancer leaves their body. But it has nothing to do with the seat. Hallelujah. It's not the oil. It's not the water. It's not the brooms. I had some place somewhere, some church somewhere, 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 somewhere. 
They were selling brooms. But this broom is so anointed. When you go with it to your house and sweep your house, every devil will be swept, swept out. Hallelujah. And people believe it. A broom you will buy in a shop at one real. You're being sold at 20, not even 50 real. So you're going to buy the broom from the pastor that costing you 50 real. Same broom he brought from, from the shops, one real. Are you getting this? Then you go use it in the house. Because why? It's anointed. Hallelujah. It has nothing to do with the broom. And yes, I agree that God can use anything, including a broom. Praise God. But it has nothing to do with the physical things. This morning, I want to take us to a place of encounter. Because that is where the anointing is. Praise God. Hallelujah. And we shall pray and we shall use the symbol, because anointing is a mighty time, symbol of the oil. And we shall put oil on each and every one of you as a symbol of this anointing, which will help you run the oil year. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. When, where I used to go to school many, many years ago, before some of you were born in high school, there was a lady who actually was coming to school. She used to smell the, fry, the anointing oil. This it is olive oil, actually. Praise God. So every time I ask her, she says, you know, my mom, the church we go to, pastor teaches us that you must drink this oil so that in the inside, no devil can touch you. And then in the outside, we apply the oil in our body so that no devil can touch you. Are you with me? That's a lie from the devil. Because it has nothing to do with the oil. It has everything to do with Jesus Christ. It has everything to do with Christ himself. Because he is the anointing. Praise God. Hallelujah. Are you getting this? Are you getting this? Praise God. You can take the anointing oil from Pastor Dan and go and pour and put it on your face and everywhere in every corner of your body but still devils will touch your life because it has nothing to do with that oil it has everything to do with the encounter with God hallelujah praise God so I want, I want to help us to understand something that, that it has nothing to do with the physical things it has everything to do with the spiritual things an encounter with God I want to show us a story of a woman in the Bible that actually encountered what you may call the real anointing of God. Praise God. I'm praying as because what we have in store, it is, it is amazing. Praise the Lord. Go with me in the book of Luke, chapter 7, verse 36. Luke, chapter 7, verse 36. Luke, chapter 7, and verses 36. Before that, 1 John 2.20 says, But you have an anointing from the Holy One. And you know all things. Praise God. Isaiah 10.27 And shall come to pass in that day that his burden will be taken away from your shoulder and his yoke from your neck. And the yoke will be destroyed because of the anointing. Because the anointing of God breaks every yoke. Hallelujah. Yokes of sickness, yoke of diseases, yoke of witchcraft. The anointing of God breaks every yoke. Praise God. When you are a believer, you, come to, uh, you, 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 you will come to an encounter with Jesus himself, um, who is the oil of God by himself. Um, and that relationship will give you an anointing that breaks every yoke. The day you gave your life to Jesus Christ, um, you encountered that anointing. But today I want to help us understand something. That when you go deeper in him, um, you get, nothing can touch you. No sickness, no disease, uh, no devil, no spirit. Uh, no witchcraft can affect your life when you know him who is the anointed one of God when he is in you I don't know if you are getting this look I want 
teach us how to access the real anointing. Praise God. Hallelujah. How to access the real, the real deal, the real thing. Praise God. Hallelujah. Some said the real thing. I, I'm, I'm reminded many years ago I was teaching on, 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 um, on, on the real thing. Then I used an example that everybody laughed at. Even the bishop sat down. I was about 25 years old. Praise God. And, and um, um, I, I, I had gone to the Minister of Education. Then I went to a bookstore and found a, a, a young lady standing outside the bookstore. She looked nice. I greeted her. She greeted me back. Maybe I was 25, yeah? We are not met. So, so I went into the bookstore. Then I found again also when I came out. Because I wanted to chat, 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 we talk. And then I invited to church. I said, let's do this. Then. Come with me to the Minister of Education office. We go there. After I think what we're doing, we'll go out and then we'll talk. Then my intention was actually to bring her to church. Then we went to the Minister of Education our office. We went there. My documents were there. The secretary of the Minister of Education asked, he as says, hey, young lady, how are you? And she got mad. And she said, look at this, 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 this babe. She thinks I'm a babe. She thinks I'm a babe. I was surprised. But I, 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 um, she was actually very mad. So I'm um, I didn't tell you the truth. I'm telling you the truth now. When we were outside, heading to the office, I didn't tell you that part. That's not the real deal. I helped her climb the stairs. One hand and floor. And we didn't, use, we didn't use no lifts. So I really helped her climb the stairs. But in the office, when she asked that, she said, I'm, I, I'm not a babe. Then I was surprised. She tells this lady, secretary, you, 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 she was mad. You, you, you think I'm a babe? You, you, you think I'm a babe? But after that, when we, when we left there, I had um, Latin words. When we went out on the street, I met one pastor friend of mine. He's, he's an evangelist. When he appeared, he said, hey, Pastor Dan. And then when he saw his, 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 his hi, honey. And again, she got mad. Say, who? Oh, you think I'm a babe? So she really shouted and said, You think I'm a babe? So I'm so surprised when she discovered I had no comments from upstairs, even down there. She turned to me and said, You also think I'm a babe? Praise God. Hallelujah. So she, okay, he now, now, now is he. He had the appearance that looks like. Praise God. He was wearing what he was, what do you call, what you call Unisex, you know, a jeans and a, a hood top. Praise God! And she had a cape, or he had a cape, and some hair was coming out. So I thought it's her long hair which is inside. Are you with me? <laughs> Praise God! And then she was coming from a different. No, I, I came from the Eastlands, not very rich, and she came from a very. So when we were talking, she was talking like their language. Are you with me? So I, I was looking for an opportunity to invite her to church. But when these things took place, I was unable to invite her to church. Actually, she walked away, leaving me speechless. Praise God. But she went away. What am I saying? I'm saying this. You need to have an encounter with the real thing. Praise God. Because the fake things may look like they're real. Praise God. I have nothing against that person. But I'm talking to us on the real things, on the real deal. Praise God. There are people who are teaching anointing, but fake anointing. There are people who are teaching the wrong thing. The anointing of God has nothing to do with the physical things. It has everything to do with an encounter with Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And in Luke chapter, in, in the book of Luke chapter 7. Luke chapter 7 verse 36. Luke chapter 7, verse 6. I'll read from verse, verse 6. And then one of the Pharisees asked him to eat with him. And he went into the Pharisee's house and sat down. And behold, a woman in the city who was a sinner 
when she knew that Jesus sat at the table of the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster flask of fragrant oil, and stood at his feet behind him, weeping, and she began to wash his feet with her tears, and wiped them with the hair of her head, and she kissed his feet, and anointed them with fragrant oil, and when the Pharisee, who had invited him, saw this, he spoke to himself, saying, this man, if he were a prophet, he will know what kind, what manner, what kind of a manner of a woman, who is touching him for she is a sinner praise God tell somebody the real anointing he is a Pharisee a teacher of the law somebody who who should be understanding the scriptures better than the woman somebody who should be having a relationship with Jesus a deeper encounter or a deep relationship with Jesus he was a Pharisee the Pharisee were people who actually um, um, were assumed to have the knowledge of God on the face of the earth were teachers of the scribes the teachers of the, of the word of God praise God but what was says is when the Pharisees asked Jesus to come to his house he came to his house for a show she invited him for a show because everybody wanted to know that Jesus is in my house. He wanted to show people that Christ is in my house. So that was for a show. But the woman, when she knew, hallelujah, that Jesus sat in the house of that Pharisee, she did something that nobody like her could do. She came out of the ordinary and decided to go behind it. That was this. She came to him, Jesus, and she stood behind him and she began to weep. And the Bible says this, she knelt down at the feet of Jesus and she wept so tearless I mean, so much to a point that tears washed the feet of Jesus and she turned her head and wiped the feet, praise God. Observe this. When the Pharisees, and when the Pharisees saw this, he had an issue with this. He spoke to himself and said, if this man was a prophet, he would know what kind of woman who is touching him. In other words, he did not believe in him. Yet Jesus was in his house. Jesus came to his house, but he didn't believe in Jesus. He was there for a show. Touch somebody, tell Jesus. I mean, touch somebody, tell somebody. Don't let Jesus, don't look at Jesus for a show. Hallelujah. Don't go to church for a show. Don't go for fellowship for a show. But come in the presence of God as you know him. Praise God. Get to know him. Praise God. The lady was a sinner. The first part before the scriptures begin, I'm not about your Bible. My Bible says the sinful woman. What are you calling her sinful? Praise God. The Bible says a Pharisee, a teacher of the law, even in Christ in. But this guy, his thoughts are a proof. He did not believe in this guy. But because people are talking about him, and it looked like the in thing to have Jesus. So she, he, he brought Jesus in his house. And they were eating and celebrating and having a good time in the house. A woman who actually the Bible calls a sinful woman. The Bible says, when she knew he was in the house. I want to teach us how to access the real anointing. Three points only. How was it? Three points. Three points only. Three points only. Praise God. Number one, you must be broken. For you to, act, to access the real anointing. Praise God. I've got the real thing. Praise God. You must be broken before God. You must come before him and surrender everything to him. You must surrender your thoughts, your mind, your everything to him. This is what the woman did. The woman understood this. Yes, I've been a sinner. Yes, I've gone astray many times. Yes, I make many mistakes. But I've decided I'm going to break myself up. I'm going to be broken before Jesus. I'm going to give him my everything. The Bible says she came to a place where she was not invited, where her kind were not supposed to be, but she did something that the Christian did not do. She did something that the, that the, that the Pharisee did not do. She surrendered her everything. The Bible says she wiped tears at the feet of Jesus so much, and Jesus let her do so. I want to speak to somebody who is here. The real anointing has nothing to do with show of experience. It has everything to do with 
an encounter. You must be broken. You must surrender yourself before God for real. You must allow him to step into your life for real. You must let God step into your family, step into your issues, step into your backgrounds, step into your private place, step into your bedrooms, step into your WhatsApp groups, step into your Facebook, step into your Instagram, step into your website, your search history. You must let God, hey, you must be broken. You must let God, you are my mama Santa. Tell somebody you must be broken. Real anointing. Some of us want to go to churches like this or service like this just for the oil. So from there you go home. But I want to tell us something. It has nothing to do with that oil, it has everything to do with an encounter with Jesus. You must be broken, you must decide. It is him that I want. It is him that I want to spend my time with. It is him that I want to go deeper in. It is him that I want to know. The woman did so. Observe this. The thoughts of the Pharisee are actually an evidence that he had nothing here to do with Jesus. He didn't even want him. But in the physical, he is the one who had Jesus with him. In the physical, he is the one who was a church person more. In the physical, he is the one who was actually with Jesus. But in the spiritual, in the very inside, when you step now to the spiritual realm, he had no relationship with Jesus. The Bible says a sinful woman actually accessed that level before he did. She came to a point that even Jesus, the God himself, looked at her and said, when I came to your house, this, uh, this woman has not ceased to wipe her, to, 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 to shed tears on my feet. Meaning they were true tears. They were not crocodile tears. It was not fake. Tell somebody you must be broken. You have to be broken. Hallelujah. When it's done, tell somebody enough with the show off. We have declared that 2020 is our year of divine manifestation. But I'll tell you the truth. This is the naked truth. There is no manifestation unless you're broken. There is no, because God is not a liar. Praise God. There are principles that govern his word. There are principles that govern everything that God wants to do on the face of the earth. There are principles. How much there are principles? Yes, there are principles that govern everything God says. Praise God. God has declared it. Listen to me. There was a young man I knew 20 years ago. This guy, a prophet, came to our church. And the prophet prophesied to this young man. And the prophet says, in five years, God will have used you to touch nations. But five years down the line, you'll be crossing borders as though they are the next street of the next estate and you will be touching nations with the gospel of Christ preaching his word but observe this, three years came down the line, five years reached but the young man is still there and still around seven years down the line, the guy is still there and seated down ten years down the line things are still the same fifteen years down the line it is still the same, so I have a question for you. Was the prophecy fake or was it for true? Hallelujah. Let me tell you before you answer that. The prophecy was true but there is a part that you need to play as a believer. You need to surrender yourself. You need to be broken. Yes, God is speaking but for him to accomplish or for the works of God to be revealed in your life you must be broken. You must let go. Let me tell you something. God loves everybody. He died on the cross for for everybody, hallelujah. But it's not everybody who is saved. But Jesus died for all. Yes, he died for you, died for your mother, 
Die it for your friend. Die it for those who are in the club right now. Die it for every sinner that you know about. But for the manifestation of salvation, it has to take you. You must make the step. But I want this Jesus. I want him to come into my life. And you must accept him to come into your life as your Lord and Savior. So in other words, yes, he died for everybody. But it is not the fact that everybody is saved. You must make the decision to accept him. Tell somebody brokenness. Brokenness. This year. Hallelujah. When you choose to be broken, there is no level of success you will not find. The scripture says the anointing of God breaks every yoke. Yoke of witchcraft breaks. Yoke of sickness breaks. Hallelujah. This year, we shall see God's manifestation. The sick will come. As they enter that door, they'll be healed. This year, people in the government, praise God, will call some of you just to utter a word of prayer so that they can, they, their sick children can be healed. Let me tell you something. Some of you will walk into mental hospitals this year. As you walk in, you may not shout in the name of Jesus so much, but as you walk in, kids who are mentally disturbed are restored a hundred percent because of what you are carrying. You are carrying an anointing that breaks every yoke. Some of you this year will walk into Hamad Hospital and every word you walk, you, you, you pass by, the fragrance of the anointing the fragrance of God will hover in the, in the floor and every sick will be healed. Every bondage will be broken. Every devil will be cast out. Hey, the year of divine manifestation. It has nothing to do with the physical. It has everything to do with the anointing of God. Principle must be broken. Hallelujah must be broken. Tell somebody number two. You must get out of your comfort zone. Praise God. Many times, people want to be broken. So they come to church like this. And anointing worship happens. And indeed, you break open. But something happens about the moment you leave this place. You go back to the same place, the same comfort zone, the same friends, the same surroundings. Hallelujah. The same place you call comfort zone. And as you do that, you go back to where you used to be. Tell somebody, this year, no. <sighs> Hallelujah. Number two is what? You must do what? So you must choose specifically. You must choose and say, I am going to get out of this comfort zone. Because those areas you're calling comfort, those areas are the things that are putting you down. Listen to me. I'm telling you the truth. The song I like, I like doing so much, the song is called um, <laughs> Here I am again, dear Lord. I'm calling on your name. I've done this many times before, but this time is not the same. Lord, I didn't come to ask you to give me something more. I only came to say, I love you, Lord. Here I am again, dear Lord. I'm calling on your name. I've done this many times before, but this time is not the same. Lord, I didn't come to ask you to give me something more. I only came to say, I love you, Lord. Observe this. Many times, many times, 
I have sung that song in tears with actually meaning it. Praise God. And so as many of us, many times, we've come before God, we actually break and tell God tonight, take over. Tonight, Jesus, I am all yours. Take, 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 take everything. Take my life, my marriage, my family, my career, my money, my everything. God, take my search engines. Take my history. Take everything. And really, you're broken. For real, in the inside you are. But what brings the problem is that the moment you leave that place, you go to the same place, the same place you call comfort zones, with the same friends, with the same people. When you get broken, you need to change your address, change the people you fellowship with, change the places you go to. For this, for that which you've received to be real in your life, you must get out of those comfort zones and desire something different, desire to be with Jesus. Jesus, desire to be with friends who will send you deeper with God, desire to be with people who will actually challenge your spiritual life, tell somebody, yeah, get out of your comfort zones. Praise God. The house that Jesus went in. The Pharisees, even though there's a slight chance he wanted to be with Jesus, it is his comfort that pulled him back to a point where he looked at Jesus from his former self and began to say, if this guy was a prophet, then he would know what kind of a woman is touching him? He may have wanted to be broken, but his comfort zone, the knowledge he had before, the understanding, I tell people this, you may have come from some places and some churches and some backgrounds, but when you reach GM and you choose to serve and commit, you should unlearn everything you've learned in the past if it's not beneficial for you praise god hallelujah and learn what you do praise the lord hallelujah some people come and say no 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 in our church you need to do this like this do it like, like this listen to me when you come here and learn what this in your church observe this when i say the church observe we are a body of christ is that true is that true we are a body of christ so there are things that are beneficial for your life and spirit and beneficial even to the next congregation you will go to. But there are things that are not. Those are men, man-made. Praise God. There are things that are just man-made. Principles of a home. Every home has a principle. Praise God. Every home they will tell you as by 8 p.m. you must be asleep. Others will tell you it's okay to use your phone up to 10 p.m. and 10 p.m. you switch off. Others they will be fine to use the phone the whole night. And they charge on the bed as though you are not in the same house. Others have, uh, ha, ha, have policies that you, you, you can watch a movie up to one in the morning. And from there you come to bed. But others will say, no, by 10 p.m. or by 8 p.m. or by 6 p.m., no phone. Those are mandates. Is that true? Because every home has policies. Praise God. And so, then, the, but there are those ones that are not beneficial here. Praise God. Because... If people, if, 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 if my children are sitting down, you know, I, I, in, in, I, I went to my, my brother's house in the U.S. And in his house, every kid has a bedroom. And in every bedroom, there's a TV. Every bedroom, there's a TV with, with Netflix. So all the kids, irrespective of their age, in this small room, they have TV in their room. And they have Netflix connection. They can go online and they can just watch movies. Praise God. So I was there and my wife said, this never, this cannot happen in my house. Hallelujah. You put TVs and Netflix and movies in the bedroom for every child. Observe this. All we can do is simply advise, but we cannot remove that from them. That is their, their house. But we decided in our house, right? Not TVs in the bedroom. Praise God. TV should only be in the living room. In the bedroom, you, know, you want the kid to sleep. 
You might have to watch movies the whole night. And then they go to school in the morning when they are so tired. Are you getting what I'm telling you? So principles, home principles. Every home has a principle. So when you come, you come, you undo what you've learned before. So I told him, if ever, 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 ever you choose to come and work in Qatar and not live in my house, you must undo all that that you've learned before. Praise God. Are you getting what I'm telling you? So you must leave everything. You must get out of every comfort zone. Number three, as I finish, you must be true. Hallelujah. I tell you the truth. There is nothing as important as being true. There is nothing important. People will come and stand here, sing worship, dance, but they're not true. People will come here, preach the gospel, but they're not true. People will come here and just walk around, but they're, they're, they're not true. The anointing will not come out. Praise God. But the anointing will come out when you're true. Praise the Lord. Observe this. I want to read us the scriptures again. And observe this. It says, verse 36, And one of the Pharisees asked him to eat in his house with him. And he went to the Pharisee's house, and Saturday began to eat. And behold, a woman in the city who was a sinner, when she, mm, when she knew that Jesus sat at the table be, 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 at the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster flask of fragrant oil, and stood at his feet behind him weeping. And she began to and she began to wash his feet with her tears and wiped them with the hair of her head and kissed his feet, his feet and anointed them with fragrant oil. And when the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he spoke to himself saying, this man, if he were a prophet, he would know what kind of a woman who is touching him. Verse 40. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Simon, I have something to say to you. And he said, teacher, say it. Therefore, there was a certain creditor who had two debtors, and one had the 500 denarius, and the other 50. And when they had nothing to repay with, he freely forgave them both. So tell me, therefore, which of them will love him more? And Simon answered and said, I suppose the one who he forgave more. And he said unto him, you have rightly judged. He, then I turned, then he turned to the woman, and uh, to the woman, I, 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 I Oh, where, where are we? Where are we? And turned the woman and, and, and said to Simon, Do you see this woman? I entered your house and you gave me no water from, for, for my feet. But she, she has washed my feet with her tears and wiped them with the hair of her head. And you gave me no kiss. But this woman, since she has, she has not ceased to kiss my feet, since the time that I came in, and you did not anoint my head with oil, but this woman has anointed my feet with fragrant oil, and therefore I say to you, her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she loved much, but to whom little is forgiven, the same loves little. And then he said to her, your sins are forgiven, therefore those who sat at the table with him began to say to themselves, who is this? Who even forgives sins? Then he said unto the woman, Your faith has made you well. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. You must be true. You can't be a pastor and you're not true. You can't be a worship leader and you're not true. You can't be a leader in the church and you're not true. You can't be even a member in the house of God and you're not true. For there to be a real anointing to flow into your life, you must be true. You must tell Jesus everything. You must surrender everything. You must let him take charge of everything. Slop somewhere tell somebody you must be true. You have to be true. The difference between the woman and the, and the Pharisee is that the woman was so true, even though her sin was so much, even though she had gone astray more times, even though she had a title, a sinful woman, when she came before Jesus, she was true. She surrendered everything for real. Nothing was for fake. In other words, her giving was true. Her worship was true. Her declaration of words were true. Her movement were true. I want to speak to somebody that in 2020, for you to be able to accomplish the purpose that God has called you to do, you must be true. You can just come when you're fake. You can just do things when you're fake. You will fool Simon. You will fool people around you, but you can't fool Jesus. The people that sat in the table, they began 
start to reason and begin to say, who is this that even forgives sin? They had no relationship with him, but the woman forged the first relationship with Jesus in the house. Tell somebody you must be true. Hallelujah. Today you guys are so, so cold. Praise God. Huh? Must be broken. Number two, you must get out of your comfort zone. Number three, so in 2020 is our year of divine manifestation. You must, you must be broken. You must get out of your comfort zone. Um, when we will be praying in this place, coming daily, setting God's face, there are things that have been seen. There are people who are not even leaders in church. Actually, I didn't know their name is Praise God. But they have been in church daily, seeking God's face. In church daily. Are you with me? I get it. You know, some people want to live a life of showing off. They come on Friday, be nice to you, but part of the beginning, and they're happy, and all that. But there are people I have been seen. To be very honest to you, if I was to, to undo my leadership, I will undo it. And pick people who do not expect. Because of the trueness in their spirit. Are you with me? Church has nothing to do with the physical. It has everything to your spiritual. Praise God. So unless you're true, you can't manifest the anointing of God. But you must be true. Hallelujah. I really honor and, and, and so I, I, I honor and bless God for people who are doing the wonders of glory. Some people are coming daily, even with their uniform from work. With their uniform from work. Directly from because they know this. If I go home, come, I'll be late. So they come just directly. You know why? Because it has nothing to do with your appearance, it has everything to do with God. Hallelujah. And today I'm blessed. I saw one lady with a uniform. There. Just like this. Yes. That's a blessing. Some of you will not come to church because you think you came from work late. Before you go home, you change where you are. Your 25 inch heels. Eh? Before you put some hair, you know, you know, I think last week uh, we were in the office uh, at, at a church, we went to the office. Then as we went to the office, I saw the hair I had seen in my wife's head outside. And I was surprised. See, this was not your hair. Are you now telling him? Praise God. Are you getting this? Now she has amazing hair. I love it. Praise God. But then there is, the other one she had was so nice. But you were in the service, I actually thought it was her hair. I'm just enjoying, loving it. And then this is the office that come out. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, some of us want to, want to come to church only when everything is in place. Hallelujah. They said to me, if you have to go in the presence of God and all you have is a pajama, as long as it's decent, please come with the pajama and go in deep in the presence of God. If you have to go in the presence of God and all you have with you is a trouser and a blouse and, and there's, maybe you, that hair that day was not ready. Not the, 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 the socks, the, the one. Like this. And then you take some, some, it's called a show. A show. Show, and then you just close here. We pick his style. 
This is to me. Because your intention is not for sure. Your intention is to seek God's face. Hallelujah. Though I'm telling you the truth, I appreciate and acknowledge every kind of beauty because all of you are beautifully and wonderfully made. And every time you appear with different hairs, like my wife, I still appreciate you. Hallelujah. Some of you, it's hard to know you when you are outside because you look different. But let me tell you something, just like my wife, but all through, all those things are good. Hallelujah. But when you come in the presence of God, come before God with trueness in the inside. In the inside, don't have those fake hair. In the inside, don't have the fake dress clothes. In the inside, don't have the fake faces. But be true in the presence of God and touch Him. Hallelujah. And the real anointing of God will come in your life. Be true in the name of Jesus. Be in your feet, be in your feet.